dealt with, um, you know, been involved with or know of. Uh, similar situation where a city or a township, or a village has some property, they go out for the preferred developer uh, kind of RFP. And again, it, it, again, in, in our experience, it helps when you have at least some vision to say, here's kind of what we're going towards, not that it has to be that. But it, it's a beginning of the talking points. Scott? What's that? Is that it's not working? No. Uh, again, market analysis, real quick. Again, if you took a look at it, uh, there's a lot of numbers in there, obviously. Um, this was just a, a high level look. Again, you know all this. You know, there's certainly plenty of commercial and retail uh, opportunities in this specific market. Um, you know, from a residential use, you know, uh, the economist, you know, was, was really looking at, you know, where where it might need to be, you know, in terms of making sense, in terms of number of units, 80 to 120. Again, that's certainly a question of density, and you know, it's a question of parking, obviously. Um, so, you know, certainly that's not the so. uh, Pandemic uh, may delay office market in short term. I'm sure all of you know that and, and could give a seminar on that, or at least, and would like to hear your thoughts here uh, in the second part of the session. Um, and then, Target businesses that aren't moving to e-commerce. Again, a lot of you, most of you know that, uh, particularly the recent uh, retail and service uh, a world. Uh, you basically you know, try to hit on folks and target uh, folks that uh, aren't really taken over by the Amazon uh, of the world, essentially. Scott, sorry. Um, site overview, the next two slides, I'll turn it over to Dave. We've got an aerial, we've got a topo map after that. Um, I'm going to go over. Yes, sure. Real quick. Yeah, I want you to go ahead and move that one forward one, please. Yeah, okay, back one. <laughs> All right, so um, the site is about seven acres, and uh, it's it's a redevelopment site. So in general, the utilities are there. It's a relatively flat site. It slopes about 3% from west to east uh, in general. You've got 12-inch sanitary, 12-inch water in Montgomery Road. And uh, phone and electric are are both there overhead along Montgomery Road. Go forward one there, Scott. Uh, from a drainage standpoint, um, you know, in general, again, it's it's a pre-developed site or it's a redevelopment site. So um, the sewers are there to take the water, uh, but there is a little bit that drains to the north to the residential community to the north. But most of it will drain down towards Montgomery River. And again, we've got on the boards here. If you want to come up here uh, at any point, you know we can we can look at that in more detail and closer. Um, just want to go over real quick the uh, township goals uh, for for the site. Uh, certainly, and, and this was certainly a, a very important thing for the topic for the, the first group, the neighborhood group. But we want to make sure that whatever happens here. Uh, that the adjacent residential neighborhood is properly, you know, buffered and screened. Um, you want to create sustainable revenue, you know, and again, as most of you know, for a township, that typically comes in property tax. Uh, on this particular site, there's a JED, the Joint Economic Development District, uh, which will allow for an uh, income tax. So certainly, you know, from a creating a sustainable revenue stream standpoint, you know, that is an important goal, you know, for the township as well. Uh, complement and supports township stakeholders. Again, this was uh, this was probably most important, um, you know, probably for a lot of you, but but certainly for the second group, you know, the stakeholders. You know, you know, folks like them all, you know, and, and other business owners who want to do something and and create uh, a mix of users that certainly will complement the folks here, the current stakeholders. Uh, certainly not um, uh, hurt them in, in any way. And, and again, lastly, you want to ensure high quality development. Again, I know you all know that. We spent time here in, in Sycamore Township, in Kenwood area, and uh, the township, I think, has done a really good job for the last many years you know, ensuring that, that the aesthetics you know, and, and the planning of it uh, is very, very high quality. So, yes, Colin. These next two or three slides, again, you could give seminars and this stuff, but it was really for the first two groups, you know. Just giving them an idea of when we're throwing out types of land uses. Uh, so again, don't don't key in on anything in particular here. Uh, again, office. I try to pick uh, close stuff. You know, medical. Okay, Stella. 
in retail. It's plenty of retail or a lot of retail in the township, uh, as you know. Residential, again, maybe they'll be residential, maybe not. That's what we're going through. I want to hear your thoughts, certainly. Uh, that's right down the street. Uh, if you know who they are, uh, down at Silverton, uh, the MV uh, development. Uh, and then uh, this is just uh, this is a development uh, somewhere in Atlanta. Uh, I, I, I picked it off the internet because I wanted something, particularly for the first two groups, to show kind of a bird's eye view of, of a mixed use, uh, a, I'll say smaller mixed use development. Uh, you know, some of those folks don't really have an idea what mixed use is. This group, you guys and folks and cows, you do. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. Okay, next. So that was that was the slideshow. I mean, it was intended to be quick and, and go through it um, uh, in about ten minutes or so. Um, so again, really, what we love to do is get your thoughts. And again, uh, what we're doing with all three groups is we're collecting uh, the comments, uh, we're going to, um, you know, document those, put them in a final report. Uh, and, and certainly make those available to the final group, this, this fourth session that's coming up, uh, I think in May sometime, um, where we'll actually get together um, around the table and do a design shred. Many of you have probably done design shreds on, on your projects before. Uh, that's where we'll have a landscape architect, with color, you know, uh, color markers adopted, and start building a bubble diagram. We'll just start going through the different ideas. But, but again, all three of these sessions, we're taking the comments and then try and, and the intent is to you know, get those comments at least out on the table. And, and again, not that every comment can make it into the plan, but better and different, but certainly you know, building up to that kind of you know, concept plan. And that's all it is. And again, you keep saying this, but you, you folks have been through this on sure your projects. And uh, you know, at, at the end of that design charrette, we'll come back and Tighten it up, you know, with an iteration or two. And at some point, you know, after that, I expect late May or June time frame, we'll deliver that to the trustees. Okay. And after that, you know, if you ask me what are they going to do after that, I don't know. You know, you have to ask the trustees. Uh, but, but again, we're trying to get, you know, input from the key stakeholders. It's important to know the trustees want to do. So that's. That's the slides of the show portion. Um, anybody, I, I've got a list of questions that I'll go to. You know, you can get crickets. You know, I don't know. Uh, but uh, any thoughts? I mean, again, things like, you know, what what would you see working for this site? Whether it be a single tenant, you know, two tenants, or, you, know, just, you know, traditional or non-traditional mixed use, all the rage, you know, certainly. Thoughts? Jay, I have. Two questions. One, is the township going to acquire any additional property that we currently have? Not to my knowledge. That's, that's not currently planned. Okay. And then, uh, do we have any idea as far as limitation of height? It's the current zoning. Yeah. Uh, current zoning allows for uh, maximum height of uh, 45 feet in, um, in multifamily residential. Um, but with this site being developed, uh, potentially as a, as a, you know, PUD or SPUD, um, there, there could be allowances for that. You could go higher. So you said that was on residential. That was, that was on residential. Uh, the, the office space, I believe does go higher. Um, but we would have to take a, it, it would be through more of a PUD review and looking at, um, heights in relation to, uh, distance from, from existing single family. So it's an open, open-ended answer. <laughs> I apologize. Uh, but there's a lot of flexibility on that site. So I'm Mike and Vicki. Um, so I, I'm just curious you, this slideshow that you went through, you showed some of the big buildings that surround it, but then you, you know, I think we all, I think you probably get unanimous opinion here that it's a mixed use site that you have know, unique, you know, combination of things. Uh, but the mixed use site that you showed, I'm, I'm assuming that you shared with, well, that you shared with the, the neighbors and such. We've all had battle scars of being in a zoning meeting before. And what you showed was extremely low density. Um, 
and I'm not sure that I'm not sure that you know showing that type. Is that me? I'm not sure that showing that that drawing to the neighbors is going to Let's go back. And you know, help the cause going forward. You know, if that's all the density you're putting on there, you know, it's, it, you're going to be a long way from you know maximizing the site and. I just think it would be helpful to set the expectations to the neighbors that you know this is probably going to be a significant project. Um, but that's just yeah, my opinion. I, I, I understand that. I uh, agree with that. Uh, and again, when I talk to when we talk to neighbors, uh, the intent there with those photos uh, was to just say, "Hey, folks, when I mentioned mixed use, or someone says mixed use, it's this. It's a mixture of uses." We're talking about folks that have zero development or construction background, but the point well taken. You know. Okay. Not disagreeing with the density thing. You know, I want to pick something that has bird's eye view, somewhat compact from a from a footprint of a site, and there's a lot of mixture, a lot of mixture of uses. That that was my intent. Okay. So Jay, I got a question. If I this is a great site, seven acres in an incredible location, but just as important as this site is the sites around this site. So is there any thought to looking at the bigger picture? What happens in a mall redevelopment if you densify that? What about increasing the footprint of this? Because it's hard, these all have to work together, right? You can't look at this in a vacuum. So this has to complement, happens everything else. Greg's doing an incredible project right next door to here down the street. So you know all those things, that's where I, to look, come up with the highest and best for this site, I almost have to look at everything around it and see how it's gonna be redeveloped personally. To say what I can recommend, for this, the ever-changing office, what's happened in the retail, what's going to happen at the mall? Can you densify the parking lots at the mall? You know what I mean? Yeah. Those all—that's the kind of planning exercise I see. That big a picture, and then come back to this site and say how that fits in to all of that. So that's just a comment more than anything else. But uh, you. Yes. I, you know, I'm John Heek, and, and I've been involved in the area, and I was involved with town properties in the mall. <laughs> And I've done stuff in other cities like Jeff and JR and those guys. Your problem with this site and the reason it hasn't been developed, and you know, this is almost 40 years experience, is it's got bad accessibility. I mean, the left turn from Kenwood to Montgomery, the fact that you can't return comfortably to Madeira in that area of re return to home has always been the knock on the site. You'll find most bro retail brokers who've got our level of experience have known this for years because that's, I can't return home. And so the other thing is if you do a mixed use on a seven acre site, you can quickly get to a three to 400 to 500,000 foot project, just depending on what you, on, on how you see doing it and how you choose to park it. But if you park a site that big, or say you have 300,000 uses or whatever, you know, you, you know, you're one car per or five cars or six cars per thousand, you can do the math very quickly. You know, it's 1,800 cars. So that's the garages or garages of X size. So you have this high dense side possibility and only a right turn to leave the site. You, you, you're too close to the light to make the left turn. It says in all your work that you don't want to have orchard lane, have access. And if you're going to have mixed use, whether it's an office building, apartment and retail, whatever you're going to have, you're going to have loading and unloading in the back door. And you're going to cram them all into one intersection. And I had this in Towson, Maryland, where I had to get you on and off the street with a single, with a single point of egress. And... Yeah, you know, we spent seventy-five thousand dollars a year on Maryland sheriffs to direct our traffic at Christmas, because we were too close and could never fix it. You have this, I had this identical situation. So I'm like, you have this great site, but you really got to think about to Chris's point, looking at the whole area and how it works. Because even with Greg's site, the mall site, there's a lot of dead end sites in this part of the world in terms of getting in and out. And if you want shopping in this market, any market, you can't make it hard. If you make it hard, they're gonna, it's easy to get on the internet. But you know, you, you really have some opportunities, but a high density use is gonna be a high parking use. And then you guys say, how am I gonna get them out of here? Yeah, how, how are you gonna distinguish between um, 
highest and best use for the property and the economic impact of what the property could generate if you had an intense development versus what the neighborhood will go crazy over and that is that they're going to want to see something as low density as possible so how are you going to you know adjust or the economics of this site between trying to do something that creates a lot of value for the land versus trying to satisfy the neighborhood which is going to take the value of the land way down don't disagree. I think there's going to be a lot of balancing going on, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, just me, you know, on this side, for a lot of reasons. So, you know, ultimately, that's going to be up to, you know, uh, you know the developer, developer team, and the trustees. Again, I'll say this 10 times, but I'm not speaking for the trustee, you know, a facilitator through this process. Uh, but, uh, you know, if they do choose to develop the site, okay, you can go out for your typical. For developer RFP team, whatever. Um, maybe that's a question for the you know, developer team. Sir, I, I, like I said, through this this project and this process and, and that design charrette coming up with at least an initial vision, again, we're, we're seeing that as you know a starting point for discussions. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. It is always difficult, you know, as a developer. I mean, we can come up with some great plans and all that kind of stuff, but it's always tough as a developer to spend your time, effort, and money on coming up with a great plan that nobody wants. I mean, how, I mean, how, or, or that the, the trustee there, won't make a trust, tough decision. Yeah, exactly. Won't make a tough decision, or they'll let the neighborhood decide what they want. I mean, you know, it's kind of like, you know, do you really want to waste your time doing that without having some direction to what the trustees would think would be reasonable? And maybe would want to try and sell to the neighborhood before you go that far. I I can't disagree with you. And I think again, that's I think why part of the reason that why they chose to go with this process. This is the very beginning. You know that had pieces of, and parts of this land for many years. Uh, you know that's why we're starting the discussion. You're, you're meeting number three in a very probably a, a you know multi-year process. All said and done. Do, do we know? Do the trustees have a time frame in mind? Are they trying to? I don't. Um, no, I, I, you know, I, I don't think that there's, you know, there, there's no deadline to to get this thing to market. Uh, the idea is, okay, if we are going to market it in the future, um, you know, how should we go about that? Um, the this this focus group shred process. Um, that, that was proposed and, and implemented by the trustees. The idea is, let's start with the residents. Let's get their concerns. Let's talk to the the surrounding business community. Talk to the talk to the surrounding stakeholders and get a sense of what's compatible. You know, to to address your concern from earlier. And then let's let's bring a group of you know developers together and and let's talk about you know the the maximums, the minimums. Um, you know, what really makes sense on that site. Let's take all those comments, take it back to, um, you know, a planning group and try and develop a, um, you know, not necessarily a master plan for the site, but let's start talking about mixed use ratios. And, you know, from there, can we, can we use that information to develop an RFP? Um, you know, as far as timing, that's, you know, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear this group's input on that. You know, when does it, when does it make sense to, um, you know, get this to market. Well, you know what? I mean, it, it, when you bring it to the market is going to depend on the kind of tenants and the things that you can do. I mean, everything has changed 100% or even more over the last three or four years in the retail business. So if you're going to go out and say, hey, we want to create some kind of retail image to this higher end, not compete with the mall, there are people out there, okay? But those people are, you know, to go find a specific group of people who would complement this site they'd want to know that the deal's real you know what i mean you can't just go do that and go like three years later they may not be in business sure. i'm just saying you can't it's very difficult to do that if you're really looking to you know put something other than right now you know apartments are popular let's face it um but if you're trying to put retail on it you know people have to there's no one out there going like yeah i'd love to be here uh you know but i'm you know, I'm also looking for other sites or doing other things. And the time frame has to be fairly short if you want to deliver something 
that is you know defining the retail tenants. Well, let me go off that for a second. So I've heard retail from you two guys. Uh, I mean, what about the other classes? I mean, what what are your thoughts on the office market? I know we're in a weird place right now. This who knows? Big question well, mark. Is a consensus. Yeah. Um, <laughs> push a little, push, yeah. push a little bit harder. Just, it's hard. First to come. one is this. Yeah, the voice on it there. Yeah, the the one that looks like a talking. Oh, he, he's pushing. Ryan, he's pushing. How many times? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Keep talking. I, I mean, you know, obviously, it, it, uh, Mike, yeah, Mike, Mike, did Mike. Mike can speak to this better than I, but um, one of the problems you have is you got a ton of money in the site. So unless the township is going to, you know, just uh, agree that they're going to lose some of that money, you got to generate jet revenue. And so, you know, that's only going to come from office, but, you know, this is obviously not the time to try to do office. Um, and I don't know when that is, but the picture looks totally different post COVID uh, than, it, than it did before. So, I mean, that's going to be a, an interesting, um, you know, equation to solve because you're just that's where your revenue is going to come from. But you know, there are not many people out there today that are, are you know, chomping at the bit to do office bill. A quick hypothetical question for you or whoever: um, If if the pandemic had never happened, what would you have said about office? Great one at this site at this particular site. Yeah. Well, kind of long legs. I'll take a bit of that mess uh, question. So we we own Redstone, which is the building right next to this project. If the pandemic didn't hit, we should have about 565 people in our building. We have 65. That's it. And that's all we've had. I mean, 65. Matter of fact, for probably five months of the pandemic, our doors were locked. Locked. Nobody could get in our building because we only had probably eight people in our building. And we found it to be unsafe and thought that it was probably the best thing to do for the eight people that were actually in our building because it just wasn't enough traffic in our building to allow those eight people to be by themselves. And so until we had more people return to our office building, we just told every tenant in our building, we're locking it down. Sorry, but you're gonna have to go to the post office to get your mail. And then we had a few tenants return. And when we got enough volume that we felt it was safe enough, we opened up the building with some other building hours, still not open on Saturdays, and our elevator is still locked above floor one. And it's a five-story building. You can't, without a card, get above floor one. And every quarter goes by, and a tenant that isn't in our building tells us, I'm going another quarter before I'm going to return. Another quarter, I'm not going to return. And they're telling us they're coming back, they're going to come back, but another quarter comes and they haven't come back and they just keep extending it. And we have in Sycamore Township, two other available office sites to develop. And the deal, the velocity of deals in the market are not there that were there pre pandemic. And so we've got to get the deal velocities back of new deals, not deals that are a tenant, let's say, that's already in the Kenwood market that might just want to relocate, right? I don't think Sycamore Township wants that, right? They don't want to trade deals inside the market. They want to see new vibrant tenants to come into the office market so that when you're building the new office building, right, that it's new tenants coming to Kenwood to fill these office buildings. And Greg's right. That's where the tax dollars come for Sycamore Township. Well, that, that speaks to the timing, not only for this project, but to Chris's point, how much, how, how much overall planning do you do over some period of time so that as the office market comes back and other things start to happen, that this becomes a cohesive part of a bigger overall plan. We talked about the last meeting, what kind of connectivity do you come up with? How do you deal with the traffic? situation because it's not isolated to this parcel or ours or anybody else's it's the whole it's the whole deal got it skylar i i got a, i got a the kind of bigger picture question so from the township's perspective is it a clean slate right now 
Would you consider the site a clean slate? Anything's on the table? At this stage, yes. Okay. There's really three ways to look at it. And again, I look at our Montgomery project, right? My side job is on the mayor of Montgomery. We're redoing our front door right now. When we went, we went, when we went into that, we knew we were going to buy high and sell low. That was a given going in. So that we knew that. We took that tier. Then we looked at it and said we can do a really low density development. We know it'll keep every neighbor happy. It's not going to be generational change for the city, but it'll get it developed and the neighbors will be happy. Then we looked at it. What happens if we shoot for the moon and the stars? Make an incredible project that's really going to make it great for Montgomery for generations to come. It's going to take some political will and some leadership from the city council to get it done, but we're going to get it done. That's the reason I asked the question. There's going to be some political will. You guys got to decide. Do you just want to get this developed to get it off the books, or do you want to make a difference long term for Sycamore Township? That's a decision you're going to have to come to sooner than later. And you're going to, you are going to sell up. There's going to be a huge gap to deal with. But you know what? It, it's, this is a generational project. It's a generational site. So it's not just about the dollars today, right? It's about the long term, what it does for the rest of the township. So well, I, that's why I asked that question. And I think those comments are, are what need to be said at the beginning of this, the, this you know, endeavor. Um, you know, we do want to keep in mind the, you know, the residential area, you know, that, right. that's adjacent to it. I mean, we can, Amen. You know, um, but you know, we're, we're looking for sustainability for, for this site and, and for Kenwood as a whole. How does this, how does this, uh, you know, track of land play into that? Another thing, you know, that, that, that we've talked about as a team and, and I, I brought it up to the last couple groups, you know, is, there's all kinds of opportunities here, as you talked about. You guys are doing, I'm sure, very well in, in Montgomery with your site, but, you know, you know, the opportunity for a gateway. And again, the main gateway, the front door is at the interchange, but this is certainly a primary kind of secondary, if you will, gateway. And, you know, it, you know what opportunities does the township have? Uh, again, there's aesthetics and branding going on there, but I'm just illustrating. I agree. There, there's a lot of, to your point, there's a lot of different things going on, a lot of balls in the air, a lot of balancing acts going on here. And I would suspect back to the back to the public input and you know, and, and what we're showing them, it's like I, I would I would suspect there there be, there'd be plenty of public hearings and or open houses going forward as there should, at the, as there should be. You know, so at, we're at the very very cusp you know, of this discussion. And we're, again, we're trying to give something, uh, you know, more than, to the trustees, more than what they have, which is basically the GIS maps, right? I, I mean, so that's where we're starting. And that's where we're taking your input and everybody else's. So, um, so yeah, office, that's in a quagmire right now. Certainly timing is not now. Yes, sir. No, I, I, th I think you hit the nail on the head is that, you know, the, the, the will, you know, to, to create something that really is, you know, generational that really adds to the township is going to be a, I mean, you got to take some political heat and decide that it's a long-term deal, not just trying to satisfy the neighbors because whatever you put here is going to be here for a long period of time. So my question is, I don't know. I know Tom Wiedemann a little bit. Are the trustees ready to do that? Take that kind of heat? I don't know. You have to ask the trustees. How many neighbors but, uh, showed up at the meeting? What's that? I mean, neighbors showed up. At the, uh, it, it was a closed session and invite only. We had uh, what eight to ten? Uh, it was about eight, 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 eight or nine. Yep, yeah. yep. Again, it was not set up as an open house. Uh, again, I suspect there will be. Yeah. 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 Would have been eight. <laughs> yeah. no, so, so no doubt. The, the comment I keep hearing is, is you know, you, you want the trustees to, you know, draw a line in the sand. Well, I, I want them to be able to make that decision, but it's got to be an informed decision. So, you know. We're, we've heard from the residents. We've heard from the businesses. We, you know, it, it, it is a blank canvas, but you know, there, there's a lot of painters that, <laughs> so, you know, uh, chipping that. So when you say it's a blank canvas, I mean, there's, there's, yeah. you know, there's a real low density, simple answer, maximize current dollars. You go put a Chick Fil A and a Mike's car wash and a, and a raising canes in, and you know, and, and be done with it. And Does that make it a viable site? Does that make it a viable site? Yeah, I mean, can no, they can't. It's they can't get the back. The site. They can't get back on the highway. They won't go there. It's not the best. <laughs> <laughs> Chick Fil A won't go there. <laughs> yeah, so, so I just want to make sure that I'm not missing the boat. And you know, we're thinking big, and you guys are thinking, no, no, we, we can't get you know, politically past that. And, you know, these 
these two here are the best you know retail brokers in, in, in the city and as he was saying earlier you know you got to make a decision where you're going because they can't be in the habit of presenting a site that the, the customer can't have right yeah. you know, they don't want to go to some big customer say, i got this great idea here yeah. can i have it well no <laughs> well i i don't think you're missing the boat i guess my comment would be just hearing comments so far is i think maybe getting ahead of the head of the car before the horse here it's like this is very beginning so it is a blank slate and again i can't speak for the trustees but again this is why they want to go through well, this process to find out what people might go there you know. tonight, right? I no, no, but yeah but here, here's here's the pushback you got experienced people in the room who have done this okay there's a lot of us want to raise our hand and say, we've been there, done that, and we're trying to tell you the stuff that says you're going to get nowhere where you are now because there's nothing to do. If you gave anybody here an hour with that site and its survey and its dimensions, we could all box it out and give you your office retail mixed use, your residential retail mixed use, your office only use, you know, and it, it's, it's just a matter of geometry mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. what has to fit. But that's what we're trying to, you know, there's so many unknowns here. There's some things you, you you have to be realistic. For office or retail, you have the identical development issues. It's parking it and accessing it and integrating it. For residential, you have a couple of issues, but to afford the site, you need to have something fairly high-end at the numbers I've seen that probably is not matching the adjacent neighborhood very well in terms of pricing of a market. You know, from a hotel point of view, if you think office is bad, go have a hotel meeting right now. It's it's not been you know wonderful, but hotels are not hard to fit. You can fit a hundred and fifty room hotel on an acre and a half. It's still five acres to go. So we're saying we we know enough to give us an hour with this site. We could give you all these things and look at the trustees and say, hey, all right, this one's going to get me nine hundred cars. This is going to get me eighteen hundred cars. This is going to get me ten cars. You know. But how do I get in and out? Because you're the accessibility of the site and, and this dreamy, what do I want to do with the site? The site has limits. This thinking outside the box is what we all yeah, we all do. But then somebody has to build the box. And so developers build boxes and we're saying, okay, we've we've sites that we can point. You can point to Jeff's site at Rookwood, you can and we can say, How many acres is that on and how does it fit? What makes it successful? And that's what we can bring to the table for anybody you want to talk to. But we're seeing a site that, yeah, it's got, it's, it's I, I disagree that it's a gateway because it's not really at, at an end or whatever of the township. And then I, I think the other thing is that uh, it is a good opportunity. You're going to have to eat a lot. But the office market in Kenwood has always been one of the best in the cities. You know, so if I take off that hat, that might be your idea. But I still got to park it. And how big do you want it to be, and how tall do you want it to be? Right. Right. Uh, something that came up at the, uh, I think it's the last session, the stakeholders township stakeholders group uh, was uh, thoughts on or the idea of destination based, we'll say entertainment. And again, I'm not suggesting the whole site. What do you guys think about that as a component? And it, the context of those comments from the group, you know, we we're talking about, well, I think I asked a question like, well, wh wh where do you folks see the, the gaps in this, we'll say Kenwood market, okay, the, the types of users, and that's the main one they talked about. It's like, well, you know, and they compared um, uh, you know, Westchester, you know, which, you know, again, not they're going to put a top, top golf here, but again, that there's, you know, not many entertainment type venues you know, in this general location, uh, there's not as many, you know, we'll say post, I don't know, five or six o'clock, other than a little bit of retail left, a couple hours, you know, there's not, not much nighttime, you know, usage going on. You know, so that was the context. What do you guys think about, you know, that just bucket of land use, destination, entertainment, and again, entertainment can be all kinds of things, bars, nightlife. Uh, not a top golf because it's too big, but it doesn't make sense. But do you, well, think, there's I mean, a, do you think there's a gap in that market? Dude? I think I think I disagree with that statement. I okay. mean, from entertainment, you got movie theaters in the market, you got restaurants in the market. The only thing I can tell you is the new and maybe coming, but I'm not sure I believe it is gamer arenas. 
you know, I don't know if you've seen or heard about one of those, but a game where I'm not sure, but they, they say they can hold 10 to 12,000 people. Wow. Uh, but I'm not sure it's a bet I'm ready to make. Yeah, there might be somebody younger to do it, but I, did, I mean, you know, you look at Cheesecake Factory, that whole portion of the mall, you got the theater here, you got Cooper, yeah, there's a taste flavor. The thing about Kenwood, it's a regional area because it's X from Norwood Lateral, X from 275. So it's a regional area. The negative on an entertainment area in a regional area is getting back in your car after a few drinks. You don't, that's why these neighborhood restaurants will grow. But you certainly got room to do that. I mean, if you had a retail shop there, you probably could get eight restaurants in there. Right. But eight restaurants on that site keeps getting back to where I'm kind of hammering you on. That's going to take a lot of parking. Yeah, because when you look at restaurants, you got to look at employees plus customers. I'm sure Chris can tell you how much fun they've had struggling with that in Montgomery. Garages. <laughs> yeah, if I step back and look at it, just you got to build upon the strengths you have. It's it's a destination, right? You've got the shopping, the retail, you got the restaurants, you got a great location, and because of that, you got a strong office market, right? And you're close to Indian Hill, all the good stuff. So the office market will work. It's just not going to work today. I don't know when it's going to come back. I don't think any of us know, but it would be a strong office market. From a residential side, you know better than me, but I believe it's strong. There's plenty of amenities here for empty nesters and millennials to have something to go to. They're just going to, going to walk to whatever they want across the street. That's why you built there. I think it's a strong residential play. Retail, that's up to you guys. I don't. I think there's plenty around it, and who knows the future of retail, but I'm only up to those guys. As far as a destination, I think you stick with what you have, and I think that's trying to bring something to the mix you don't need. You got a lot to build from. Build off of what you have. And that's the mall, the restaurants, the location. And I, I think a hotel could work. Um, not today, as John said. <laughs> but pre-COVID, I would have said a hotel too. And I would I would get some height to this thing. I would get way beyond, again, pre-COVID. Who knows we're going to get back to it. But get some height to it too. It's only seven acres. Get some get some height to the person. thing. I think you have to have a hotel for the for the TIF for the parking garage. I, I, I think it's going to be a requirement. They help high, yeah, they high help. value, low parking. What did, and uh, another thing that came up, a topic uh, at the last group, the stakeholders group, uh, it was kind of around when we were talking about the destination and entertainment stuff. Uh, was uh, pedestrian connections, walkability. Again, yeah. we all know that, A, that's challenging in this Kenwood area, to say the least. Um, and frankly, to be fair, I think we would all agree that in mega kind of developed and retail and mixed-use kind of areas like Kenwood, it's hard to make walkability work, or it's certainly a challenge. You know, when you have that, you know, that number of lanes and just from a, from a, even from a perception of safety, I talked about that with the last couple of groups about, you know, you got to create that perception like you would in a little, you know, streetscape area, but that's so much harder and challenging here in a big area like this. So what are your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts on, you know, the Kenwood area, this site, general area, you know, the walkability? Um, should that, is that something that the township should pursue long term? Do you see, hey, this is just so big and it's going to be car based forever? Nobody wants to walk. I mean, we have centers that people drive from one end of the center to the other. So I mean, you can make it look pretty and awesome, but nobody wants to walk. But you have to make it look pretty. Yeah. You got to make it look pretty. Yeah. You got to do with landscaping, but then I wouldn't assume that's going to be a driving factor. But how do you ever cross Montgomery or Kenwood Road or State Highway, you know what I mean, and make that, like, easy to walk across? Never mm -hmm. happened. Yeah. And well, I told the group, you know, just Jay's opinion was, you know, I don't care if it's downtown Silverton or, or particularly five or six lanes, you got to create that perception of safety because the two ends, in my experience, the two ends of the demographics, the younger folks, particularly with kids, and then your older demographic, they're, they're going to be like, hey, I'm, no way, I'm, I'm, I'm traversing that, you, you know, so it, it's a challenge. I don't disagree with you, JR. But, I, I, don't, you know, I don't know what this township's overall sidewalk, sidewalk network is, but, you know, neighbors, people who live there, they will come here via bike or walking if there's a network to make it safe. I surely wouldn't cross at the main intersection there. I'd cross right there at Orchard and right. down in front of McDonald's. I mean, those are much safer instances. Right. I think you have to have at least the perception of it, and some of the local people will. And if you get your apartment people, they're going to want to walk across the street. I mean, they're active. They're millennials, empty nesters. They're active. 
I mean, what, what Madeira has done with their sidewalks is, is fantastic. Oh, amen. I mean, literally. In Montgomery, know, we have more ass. people on our sidewalks yeah, tonight. It's crazy. All the time. Yeah, because you feel safe yeah. and they're there. Yeah. And, and I don't know whether you, you talked about this in the last meeting, whether you slow down traffic intentionally to create those crosswalks and those places where you can get across or at some point along Kenwood Road go over the top with a bridge. Uh, we had a project in Orlando and they built this huge bridge over I-4. People going back and forth across it all day long. It's a, it's a pedestrian, pedestrian bridge. Yeah, it's yeah, a number, yeah. but at the end of the day, you create more connectivity between different sites. The, the, the other question I have in terms of timing, and I, I don't know any of the politics or where it is, but somebody mentioned Gateway and whether or not it's a gateway coming right off the expressway is not so much a, a question for me, but but how do you create a gateway or a, a signature development and not incorporate the BP? Yeah. yeah, that main intersection, you know, when I say gateway, I mean, that's that's probably the closest gateway area. But, but that's, yeah, but that's but my yes. point. Yep. How, yep. how do you not, I mean, again, you don't. As, as, as you're saying, well, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to make maybe a profit on, on a land sale, but how many parcels in, in Kenwood are left like this? Right. Is this it? I mean, there aren't many. Of seven acres? Yeah. None. So, <laughs> so is there, so <laughs> what, what's a good reason? <laughs> yeah. So, what, you know, what's, what's the rationale for not getting that? Because you've got, you got one opportunity for a site this size. And why would you put that kind of cap, invest that kind of capital and, and everything else and not do it right, meaning, get the BP. Maybe that's impossible to do, but somebody ought to really be. Yeah. Skylar, yeah, I agree with Greg. I mean, I think it's a half-baked site right now. Um, I think it's incomplete. There was talks before you arrived, but many years ago about the BP, um, Greg's site, about making it a much larger gateway opportunity. And I think that's what needs to happen to provide the access to both Kenwood and Montgomery Roads. Um, it, it's, I mean, John makes a ton of great points. I mean, from a retail perspective, I mean, JR and Jeff can talk about all that all day long, what these retailers look for. Um, it, it's not in that site right now. And that is a half-baked site. What I was gonna say is just as important as you're talking about walkability is just really the the access, the traffic getting in and out of the site. And, and if you've ever come out of Redstone and not hit the traffic lights from Redstone to 71 to go north, how long that actually takes to do that, it, I felt lucky one day that I actually hit them all green. That is, I think happened once. Otherwise, especially Montgomery, Montgomery Road and Kenwood Road, if you are going to add more traffic coming out of what would be that site, whatever happens to it, whatever's going to go on there, coming out on the Montgomery Road into that intersection, I, oh. Dangerous. Whatever, without doing something to help it, alleviate some of the traffic, do something. Traffic's, yeah, and traffic's a challenge. I mean, I know the trustees have known I that mean, for many years, yes. Yeah, it, and as, as far as what he was saying about the BP station, I mean, I, it, it changes the entire character of the project, and I think it would change the walkability of the of the entire community completely. Um, you know, I don't want to run the price up and tell you you got to have it, but you have to have it. Yeah. You could say that about others too. I mean, I look at it as a blank slate. I, nothing's off the table in my mind, right? Right. When you go to lay this thing out, you got to right. look at the houses. You got to look at Greg's place. You got to look at BP. It's it's all on the table. Well, Greg's place is a little different. <laughs> oh, no, no, you just got to make it a part of it. So it's yeah, yeah, you have to incorporate and make it yeah. look like it's the whole thing. But, yeah, you know. right, exactly. Well, I think you've got to integrate the Redstone site in because that's where the traffic uh, part is. Uh, and obviously, the folks are here, but I, I would say that to get walkability, to get that is, is working with the Redstone by its traffic light and its access. Um, you know, with or without the BP, I think is is, is going to be you know a big part of it. And then you know we're all 
I don't think any of seen in here that doesn't have lots of candlelit experience. And we get the tenants in our ears and we tell you that the, uh, the congestion on this side of Montgomery Road is a huge deterrent. And it you know, gets you a big thinking of how do I solve that? Because, you know, Dollar General will look at that site and they're a growing company because I can't return back the way I came. You know, and uh, you know, so that's that's what we're saying. And then from a walkability, if you incorporated with the Redstone site, I think you incorporate walkability and green area and so forth to, to, to enhance that. Yes. You talk about the next step is to create a vision for the site. I just think you're doing yourself a disservice if you create a vision for this site without looking at something much larger, because you're never going to do just that. If you do, it'll be a mediocre project. It just will. And that's what you want. That's okay. Plus, how do you, how do you, you know, when you look at the residential homes that are left there, I mean, you have to buffer those homes. There's more land, you know, and now in, and when you really have a street that really could work as a buffer and you're right, I think without going all the way to the corner and taking all that, I don't know. I mean, the retards we talked to were like, eh, maybe okay. And, you know, just to give you a background, too, I bought that site where uh, Taco Bell is 25 years ago. No, that's like 40 years ago. We've got to hold you on. <laughs> we're we're going to kill them. We put a long down summer. We're storm <laughs> market. People never went that way on Kenwood Road. I mean, Montgomery Road. They did not pass Kenwood Road. <laughs> I was trying to say, I think you get you're right. I think you got to take it and say, hey, the whole overall plan here is to take all those houses, take all the way to the corner and say, what would it take to have this? And the township's going to have to pony up and figure out how to subsidize that. That's your gateway. Mm -hmm. now, now you've created something that's real. And I'll emphasize that, too, because we've studied the site many times. We've looked at it when it was smaller and it's gotten bigger and mm -hmm. you had Terry Bryant's and you had the, the auto zone or whatever. Or sorry, the tire guys, and it's just pet poise. You can't. It just doesn't feel right every time you plan it. Like if you just say, "Take this isolation," and every time I've done it, and I brought some things right now just to look at. Every time you do, it, you're like, "I'm just squeezing stuff in." It just feels like it's just a, it's a mashed up plan. It's not taking the whole thing. Like Chris said, looking at it globally, and what could you really make it be unbelievable? Incorporating redstone and and making it a great development versus just jamming a bunch of uses in there and it's it's okay right no it'll end up by like sycamore uh, crossing whatever they call that now it's the most right. under, under mm -hmm. piece of property in the entire probably midwest mm -hmm. um so yeah i did i mean you start throwing density on the second floor you see what happens with sycamore right <laughs> you know, i mean it doesn't work it doesn't work right so that's kind of why I ask, is it a blank slate? Because you, it depends on what the township wants. Do they want to just unload the land and develop this just piece, or do they want something that's a generational change? That's a decision yep. point. I'll go back to, hey, you're in the very beginning of the process. Right, right, it's a bad. long process, and I'm sure, talking about our final session, the design charrette, I'm sure that uh, you know traffic and you know certainly suggestions for going to the closest light it will be a part of that. But again, that's, those are the things. I mean, these are the kind of comments, you know, the trustees are looking for, for sure. Um, what about any examples? And again, it could be, let's say you could get, someone could get the, all the way down to the corner, BP or, 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 or not. Are there some examples, particularly in greater Cincinnati of mixed, we'll just say mixed use developments that, that you could see working at, at this site in this market? I know that's kind of a tough question, but because every mixed use site's a little bit different. I think a little bigger. Than that. Uh, yeah, as I was saying, I'm going to look at the city. <laughs> <laughs> this is Asheville, anywhere? South, Florida? I mean, tons of stuff in Atlanta going on. I mean, you can do a tour of Atlanta and pick up 20 ideas probably. I mean, what, 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 type of, uh, what type of stuff are you seeing that's not in this market from a mixed use standpoint then? Just I better, agree, but what? better okay. development, just overall cohesive projects. I mean, we always... Because we're redeveloping stuff here, we're always pigeonholing into like whatever's there. And if you could get a bigger site or figure out you know, more of a master plan, you could incorporate something that's maybe a little bit more dynamic. But in Cincinnati, we always have the 
here's all I got. I'm just going to squeeze it in. And you don't have the, you know, the wherewithal of whatever the city council or the neighbors or whatever the issue is, economic incentives. So I would look in different cities just to find things that are more. I mean, we're partners with a group in Baltimore called Greenberg Gibbons, which is a big mixed use development. And they're doing a project in the middle of Towson, which is a $350 million mixed use with apartments, Whole Foods anchored retail on the first floor. It sits, it only sits on nine acres. And they probably got nine projects like that in the Baltimore. And so that's a nice mixed use city. But they, you know, they insist on control and their big money comes from California to, uh, teachers. And so they, they'd want a 20 acre minimum to do that kind of a site because you want to control the environment around you. So when you get down to a seven acre site, you know, you know, like we like uh, at Cincinnati, like the you know, 580 building downtown is a mixed use site. It's office residential and a hint of retail with parking. And that's a 580,000 foot building. So it's, you know, it's only sitting on an acre and a half, but you take that to the suburbs. That's a, how big a site it's, it's, you know, five, six times as big. Right. You know, in Clifton, you know, U Square, there's other places, you know, we got residential mixed use, you know, it sits on three and a half acres. But, you know, would it make any sense here? No, but physically, you know, to fit on there, it's 127 apartments, 100, you know, uh, hotel units, 80,000 feet of retail, and, and uh, there's a 40,000 feet of office. But, you know, it sits on three acres. You, you can do that. But it's, you know, it's, it's not something you can do randomly. Uh, so I can find you sizes and areas, but Towson, Maryland, identical demographics to Montgomery Kenwood. You know, similar, similar mall. It's a five-story mall there anchored by Macy's and Nordstrom's. Uh, it, it fits your profile very well. But in Baltimore County, they don't have zoning rules. <laughs> so that's you can build Texas as model. high as yeah, you yeah, want. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the building that they're doing is 18 stories on the nine acres that you know you, nobody wants to do. I mean, I, if you went up seven stories, you will have the best view in southwestern Ohio. I mean, the lenders, when they had Kenwood Mall, looked at putting an office tower in the middle of it and were denied because of the 45-foot height restriction. But they wanted to do an 18-story tower in the middle of, of what was then Kenwood Mall. They could so, see down there. Yeah, versus right. they could see they could see Northern Kentucky. If you're in the Hauser office, you can see well into Northern Kentucky on a clear day. Cool, cool. Yeah. It's it's fabulous. But a question for you. Um, kind of one of the things you were talking about. Talking about upper level, second story and above residential. So your your vertical mixed use. I think there's clearly good examples in a more urban environment, environment certainly use uh, in Dallas, U Square um, at UC. Have you? What are your thoughts on a suburban, you know, uh, mixed use where you've got the first floor retail service, restaurant, whatever, and however many floors going up vertical with with uh, residential? Have you seen many examples of that work well in suburbia? I think downtown Loveland's got a bit of that. It depends on what suburb you're talking about, right? Okay. We're looking at some sites in Nashville, and they're all over the place, right? Mm -hmm. They're okay. getting 60 bucks a foot for a retail. Yeah. That ain't going to happen here. And, and we've got stuff downtown that has first-floor retail with residential bond, and you can't give away the space. Right. Right. Well, I, I, the I think we're going to find out with Chris's project in Blue Ash. With retail, yeah, test case, yeah. With yeah. retail on the first floor and over the top, uh, with residential over the top, and that's out in the suburbs. What, what is your what, what's the max height? I guess on on the buildings over there. Oh, you can Going go four in. stories or wood on a podium pretty easily. You can go five; it's more complicated. But you get above that, you can't do it. Yeah, it never works in the rents here. To nine. If you but it, back up, six, you can't build. It's too expensive. How does it, how would I look at it as a developer? First thing I would do is I would ignore those yellow lines. I would say in this market, what I would lay out this site, ignoring that and just do the what ifs, the crazy things that you never think are feasible. 
you throw them down on paper. If you back off of that 10%, you still have an incredible project. That's the way you have to look at this. Forget about the economics of it for you guys, because that's it's kind of irrelevant. This is about what's best for the township long term. But I, I would ignore those lines. Because you have to. If you gotta fit inside that box, it's a mediocre project. I believe. And, and in order to do that, you gotta get the township trustees focused and cohesive. Certainly. Certainly. From a density standpoint, um, uh, you know, when you're talking about structured parking, above ground, below ground, doesn't matter. It's all through the roof on, on prices. And I know it's a question of vertical and height, but it's like, do, do you see that as a possibility on within the yellow lines? Do, do you see where structured parking makes sense? Depends on the uses, <laughs> but yes. Well, okay. you can understand what structured parking is. The reason you don't like it in retail is it takes away convenience. You, know, you want to get in and out of your car with what you purchase, and then an office, the same thing. I want to go home. I want to go home. I don't want to wait in the parking garage for 20 minutes or whatever. So it's, you know, the, the, the whole part of structured parking, and we just did a project at Finley. We, we did Marathon's corporate headquarters. And we added a 1,300-car garage and an 800-car, 850-car garage. Well, the design of the garage you had to com accommodate the exit because if you only had one exit out of either one, our traffic consultant said it would take eight hours to empty the garage, <laughs> given given Finley, Ohio traffic. So, <laughs> so you know, there, there's a whole art to balancing that. But you know, you got to think of parking. If it's too much structure, you know, if you ever been to a UC basketball game and parked in the Corey garage. You know, you might as well have a you know a couple of podcasts to listen to on your way out of the garage. It takes forever. So, parking and structured parking, you got to think of how to make it convenient. Unless you're making it a a destination for uh, you know for commuters. But other than that, there's there's many places like I point to Towson. There's two nine story garages next to the mall. Okay, they are a deterrent because they take so long to exit. And, uh, you know, it was a great idea in 1989, but it's not a current idea. And it's the same owner as Kenwood Town Center, you know. But I think the general consensus would be that, you know, it's expensive land. It's a good office site. If you can make the TIF numbers work, yes. If you, no, you can't put a 2,000-car parking garage in there, you know, <laughs> off the top floor. But certainly you get a four or 500-car parking garage, you know, to support the office and, you know, maybe a secondary garage somewhere else. But generally speaking, I think everyone would agree that this site calls for, for structured parking of some sort. Right. Right. Any thoughts? Any thoughts on uh, medical as as a use? Uh, MOB. Yeah. Let's go over there and ask. Well, that's, that's why I didn't ask it at the last one. She was here last. <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't build widgets like other types of things do. You know, they don't have. Many common uh, dimensions, and um, you deal with medical people, it's more becomes where they're going to put on the sites and then you know, keep it in, it's going to be this or that. And then you kind of back into designing the building, and it certainly is, is the most common area of growth in Cincinnati sure. for the hospital. I think, there, I think there's better sites for medical. So oh, I, I do too. Right? You think there's medical when? Better sites for medical. Than yeah, we've been working. We've been working with Greg on, on an office building, and we've we've been at the market now for, for a year and a half, and you know uh, we've hit all the medical users up, and you know they're not biting right now. Yeah, that just changes the flavor of the overall development. Yeah, right? if you're right. bringing that in. Well, mm -hmm. you guys have that experience in Brookwood, and I know that that combo of professional versus medical. I don't think works that, really well. That, that's it's, really. That's just a unique situation. It's basically office. You have a top right. end. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, you know, it, it works fine for us. Right, but you, you, don't, have elderly, you don't have elderly really patients. You know, right, it's uh, the yeah. only guy in there. I wouldn't yeah. add more medical to the building. Yeah, right. I don't think anybody goes with much more medical. Yeah. No. It wouldn't and it's a high end. It's, it's a high, different it's, profile. It's really their corporate offices that they all they brought all into one spot. They had like five offices. So it's as much administration as anything. Yeah. So that, yeah, yeah, it works. Yeah. I mean, you already got tri-health here, Julie's here, Marcy. 
so it would be price getting in the region. They've got a pretty big coverage out of one part of Montgomery. Children's in something, they're starting to spend a lot of money. They had a bigger place in Clipson, so I don't know how much more they're going to take on it. But just as importantly, as he said, it just changes the entire dynamics of the project. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you know, if it's a big medical user, you're going to put a lot of elderly you know, people in there that are, you know, not the greatest drivers in the world. And they well, which of the neighbors go with all the, uh, you know, the, the, the noise of, uh, you know, bringing people in and out with all the sirens going, <laughs> considering you also have to have a fire truck follow them all the way. Mm-hmm. I mean, that nursing home down the street, I live on Campbell Road, you know, and that, that nursing home down the street. There must be seven <laughs> ambulances a day that go down. <laughs> and I don't know why they have to have a fire truck problem. Yes. <laughs> From a project funding standpoint, and this is a stupid question because I know as developers you want you'd love as much in, as you know, incentives as possible, but but certainly TIF. Uh, other thoughts on you know tools that would that you would see would have to be a part. I know there's a lot of you know it depends on density and type of land use, but you know thoughts on you know how does this get funded? Well, half of it's in Indian Hill schools, and half of it's in Cincinnati public schools. You're right. So half of it is Indian Hill schools, you know, they don't participate at all, but it's low tax rate. So you can subsidize it and say, well, you're, it's an extra dollar, you know, but you know, I, no matter what the site isn't going to support itself. You're not going to say an arm's length transaction that we're just going to say, oh yeah, we'll give you your $15 million that you got in it and we'll build a garage on our own. There's the, the, the township is going to have to participate significantly uh, in order to make this project work. And, and I don't have a number off the top of my head, but you know, it's it's not going to be a million or two. It's going to be significantly more than that. And can, are you talking in the form of reduced uh, land sale cost, or in well, general? Well, it depends on what you want to create. I mean, you know, it goes back to you know, if you go get that BP station, you know, God knows what that'll cost. Um, and there's no way to justify the cost as a developer because it's a pie-shaped piece of property. It's going to end up being green space and sidewalks for the you know the reality, um, but it changes the dynamic and makes the entire community that much better. I mean, it's not wasted money. Right. It's going to help them all. It's going to help Greg Pansero's you know, site. It's going to help you know everything in this corridor is going to be you see it as like a big investment or a, a, a positive investment. Yes, as all yeah. these other trickle down effects. Right. I understand. Yeah, I think what you're hearing is you see. I mean, the price of the land is probably the least important, but has to be solved. But the infrastructure support, I think everyone's saying the same thing, is we need a bigger picture of the area and what you need to have the infra- to support the infrastructure of whatever, because almost all of us could tell you what infrastructure needed for various types of, whether you pick residential, office, medical, whatever, it's, it's, it's going to be important. And I think that's the biggest thing the township has got to figure out and listen to is infrastructure support because of what else is here you know you're just not in a cornfield creating this you're next to a 1.1 million square foot regional mall you're next to this you're next to that and it's already there and either we come in and we kill all that and steal it from them steal the movie theater steal the restaurants we'll make it your entertainment center but the rest of these places will die which is what happened in Columbus when they did Easton years ago. You killed how many malls when Easton came alive? You know, that's 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 the side effect of that. So from a traffic standpoint, certainly, you know, getting taking getting a left out, getting on Montgomery, that's a no brainer need to happen. But I, I, have you heard any comments uh, in terms of the greater Kenwood traffic, you know, you know, greater interchange area, just the whole area in terms of tenants, potential tenants? yourself as developers is it is it scaring you or is it i I will tell you it it is a hundred times better than it was 10 years ago before they they timed the lights okay you know it is a busy area and so you have traffic but you know that's good um i I don't look at it and say it's a disaster um you know could it be better of course it could be better but you know at what cost i don't know um you know be nice to have a, a, a Right hand turn lane off of uh, Kenwood Road onto Montgomery heading south. Uh, I think that would alleviate a dedicated a right kind of yeah. slip ramp kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. You know, in spite of all those problems, everybody wants to be here. Exactly. <laughs> I come here all the time. 
I don't say all that traffic sucks. I'm not going. <laughs> right. Never. It's Never 100 times better than it was 10 years ago. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Not many I places would... can say that. But right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Back to your money question and entitlements. It, it's going to take a host of them. It's going to take Jobs Ohio State. I mean, it's take all of those. Don't focus on that at first. Focus on what is best for the township long term. The dollars will work themselves out if it's what's best for the township. We'll, you figure it out. Sure. And the township's patient. They need to be patient because it's what's best for the township. So that goes back then, to you know, and, when, and, when, when uh, patience. You know, when you know, when do you see shovels going into the ground? Back to that question. I mean, how long does it take to get all that land put together? <laughs> I mean, maybe you answered it. Okay, yeah. Too early in the process. I mean, the years. The rule in retail used to be if you couldn't tell the tenant they could be there in two years, there was no reason to have the meeting. So if you keep that in the back of your mind, then you go to the office market. Most office people have to build spec because people rarely in office think five years ahead in terms of space needs. So, you know, you, you stuck. I mean, the residential option to me is the most interesting. But I don't know how that's going to go with your pricing or whatever. You said but residential option. Option, yeah. I think it to me is the most interesting because if you look at what they're doing in Montgomery at Chris's site and how much residential they're getting on that site, I mean, residential drives everything because it gives you customers, you know. And the other thing I noticed in your demographics is how old this market is. I mean, this is a, a mid 40 dem average median inc or age is a very high age. You know, I, I actually brought that topic up at the last group saying that, hey, maybe one of the goals that trustees should be looking at is maybe turning over and making this, a, you know, you know, attracting what, what could we do as another goal of the project? You know, how could we help attract the younger families so that we don't increasingly get you know, older as a demographic? We were very purposeful in Montgomery to have apartments that attracted the empty nesters and the millennials. The empty nesters, so they sell the four bedroom but stay close to their kids, and the millennials to get them folded into the community. That's very purposeful. Right. That's why I ask right. about the township's vision. We were very purposeful as a city to say we have to have that. Right. So, just think about that. I, I personally agree. I yeah. mean, that's why I brought it up at the last yeah. session. Amen. It's like that because you're you're that's how that's how a community dies and or changes dramatically. Exactly. If you Correct. Make that a deliberate you know purpose right? demographics I mean, you have amen yeah. so, so, so your question was when are you going to break ground i'd say it's impossible to break ground in 12 right. months if right. you break ground in 24 months you're probably doing the wrong project um yeah well i'll give you so in montgomery i think we acquired those sites <laughs> in 2014 we went out we set our vision in 15 went out to the development community in 15 selected a developer probably in 15 or 16 and we just broke ground in earnest last late last year. That's pretty typical of a project. Five to six years. Five, yep. yep. Know, I sold you Montgomery Chevrolet in 12. <laughs> yeah, it was. Mark shot. Oh, yeah. Patience. Well, we are uh, bumping up against our uh, time here. Uh, 10, 15 minutes left if you want to keep going. I guess, is there any, any other thoughts, comments? Questions and again, we're just starting the process, so there'll be other opportunities. Sir, you know, I, I do have a lot of questions. Just have been involved in the area a long time. When have you looked at the or the, the township looked at the the whole corridor south of this intersection? There's obviously been a lot of money spent on the from here to the highway on Montgomery and widening and traffic lights and so forth. But here, you know, it seems, I mean, the, the issue has always been there was nothing new to tell anybody. And have you ever looked at studies and done it, the, the South going into Silverton and what we can do to make that, you know, easier? But, you know, the fact is you, the thing that, that keeps getting, it was always the knock, is the lack of being able to return if I was coming from Madeira or whatever without. without You're talking that. traffic studies, right? Talking about traffic studies, but looking yep. at physically widening the road and doing things. Because long ago when we did town center, you know, it was the first TIF. You know, Galbraith Road did not want to be a major entrance to that mall because it wasn't at the time. Yet without that Galbraith Road entrance, there's no mall. And so, you know, it got studied and figured out really, you know, fairly quick. But 
I just, you know, I'm not hearing a whole lot from the township in terms of how we're looking at this this portion of of Kenwood. Scott, do you, uh, can you address that? There was a, uh, a traffic study, at, at least for this intersection and kind of down uh, Montgomery Road's proposed last year. Uh, the big question that came up uh, with this site um, was, you know, does does it benefit us to do a traffic study without knowing what uh, would go on this site? We ended up getting into this, this chicken or egg uh, discussion and it was, well, let's see what would fit on this site then we can then we can talk about a traffic study um you know the the type of the type of development that goes on here um you know will generate you know certain types of you know warrants for traffic so uh, it uh it that that kind of uh fizzled out so um you know but if i'm hearing that we need a traffic study in this area that's something uh that we can take back to the trustees no, I, th I think it's it's very important because it's uh, number one because Montgomery's a state road. Everyone's acting like you can swallow a left hand turn to Montgomery with by waving a wand, and in fact, it's mandated. A traffic light can't be within six hundred feet of an intersection. So you come six hundred feet, and that's where the traffic light can go. And a state highway because we did it up at Harper's Point and we widened everything up there. You know, this is, you know, we're, we've done it twice with the state. It's it's all mandated by the state. So you, you kind of got to keep that all in mind as you're doing that. But uh, uh, it's it's always been a problem from a retail leasing point of view as well. Let's go down here. What can I tell you believe that's happening? Never anything new to tell them. So if we do if we do a traffic study of this corridor, what what should our assumptions be for this site? 500 to 1,000 cars of parking is, is kind of a median to, to the best case scenario. And then, you know, and, and then uh, if it's residential, you know, the traffic is calmer at times, stronger at times. If it's retail, it's constant. Uh, but that that's what would fit on your site, not almost any plan anybody's talked about. Yeah, I, I, I agree with what Chris was saying earlier. I think you just got to dream big on this thing and figure out how to pay for it. If you can't pay for it, figure out what I got cut out. Um, go and, backwards. Uh, yeah. Amen. Go big or go home. And, you know, get the, 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 the trustees to understand that this is a 100-year project. This is not a one or two-year, you know, I don't get along with this guy, so I'm not going to agree to that or vice versa and all that stuff that goes on. <laughs> uh, they, they need to think that it's... It, this is going to outlast their grandchildren. Well, it's defining, it could define the future depending on what it is, right? right. It will. Right. But, but Chris, Chris, aren't I right that in Montgomery, by you changing Cross County Highway and that whole part is part of your bigger thinking, where you now you got a project that's a lot more holistic to every part of Montgomery versus when you started, you were stuck with this proximity issue I'm, I'm mentioning about traffic lights and getting in and out where if i'm coming from northern montgomery and turning into the montgomery site turning the left hand it was nearly impossible but now you have enough land and enough stuff that you've solved totally solved that problem but that's how big the thinking may have to be i mean that no one looked at that site 10 years ago and said well, let's get rid of the cross county uh interchange but that's the magic to the site yeah, but most of us say, are you crazy? Right, exactly. Yeah. But you got to think gotta, that way. I still think like it's that. crazy. Exactly. Yeah, you um, think like that um, get it done. Yeah, when you want to point well, out and that's... I, and I would say that most people think that the Kenwood market stops at Kenwood Road. You have yeah. to think mm -hmm. big. You have right. to get you have to get the Kenwood market to come past the site. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at all of the land and right. make the Kenwood market come past the site. And the BP station will help make that work. That's right. Because yeah. right now, there's uh, otherwise, it's going to still stop at Kenwood yeah. Road. Yeah. So your hand says, "Welcome to Silverton," huh? Well, <laughs> I, I was just talking about the fact that people used to refer to shops of Kenwood as shops of Silverton, which is the sh the shopping center right across the street. They call it shops of Silverton, uh -huh. not shops of Kenwood. So, so back to what Chris was saying was look at it as a regional situation. So imagine the future. Dillard's goes away. That's going to get redeveloped. Well, what's going to happen there? 
Are they going to go super vertical there? Probably. Are they going to do residential? Probably. I mean, are they going to do some sort of mixed use project right there? Now you tell me what's a better site, Dillard's or here? Well, let's, 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 let's just set that aside. Okay. But the point is, is, is that's a great site. That's a phenomenal site. Okay. So you got to make this site thinking long term. This can't be a, you know, a tiny little half baked site. It's got to be a really, really good site. So what everybody's telling you is, is you need to blow it up. It's got to be bigger. You probably got to incorporate uh, Greg's property in some way, shape or form. You got to probably incorporate Redstone. You got to get to the traffic signal for access. You probably got to do that turn. When you get BP, you can add that turn lane um, and you can create something um, pretty, pretty special there. <laughs> it, it is a test. Like the hospital we are now testing the fire alarm system. This is just a test. I agree. We are now testing the fire alarm system. This is just a test. You get to the sprinkler test. Yes. <laughs> You're on the car. Right? Bring your umbrella. Yeah. Any other thoughts? Again, thanks a lot. Um, just, just one close. Yes, so I, I hate to keep on going back to this. That's why I say we go back. So what's the township really want? Do they want to just move this dirt and just get it off the books and get a development done? Or do they want to do something really special? That's a decision point. So yeah, the site calls for something special. Amen. Yeah. Well, thanks, folks. Again, this is just the beginning. And um, I'm sure you'll be called on again for your input. So appreciate it. Thanks. Appreciate, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. appreciate the invite. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> <laughs> All right.